Scientists in the UK have made a major breakthrough generating energy from nuclear fusion, the process that powers the stars. Once developed, it's thought nuclear fusion could be the future source of near limitless power. A team of researchers generated around 11 megawatts of heat in just five seconds, enough energy to power 10,000 homes. Well, Neil Kens from CTN's science show, Razor, is here with us in the studio. So, Neil, how significant is this? What you're trying to do with nuclear fusion, you're trying to do two things. You're trying to create a reaction that, number one, sustains itself, but also creates more energy than is, it takes to start it and sustain it. What you're doing is you're jamming together two different types of hydrogen in the same reaction that powers the sun. And in the sun, of course, we've got the, uh, and the stars, we've got the immense gravity which is causing that reaction to be able to sustain itself. But here we have to come up with technologies, in this case at the Joint European Taurus, um, a magnetic containment field inside a reactor known as a tokamak. So what this is, five seconds, doesn't seem like a long time. But it's proof that the technology they've been chasing and the one that will go into ITER, the um, international uh, collaboration of 35 countries, including China and Russia, which will start in 2025, another giant experiment, it proves that, that they're on the right track. And this experiment tells them what they need to adjust as they get ready to start their reaction. And for those of us, uh, including this rather dim-witted journalist who has no science qualifications, um, what is nuclear fusion um, and, and, and what is it in this breakthrough that's so significant? The, the fact is that it's given out more energy than was put in, but, you know, only for five seconds. You want that reaction to carry on sustaining itself. And to do that, like I say, we haven't got the gravity of the sun, so we have to come up with fixes. In fact, they've got 100 million degrees inside that reactor, whereas the sun is only 10 million degrees, right? And that's because we need to come up with these different things, because we don't have the suns and the stars' immense gravity. So, like I said, you're trying to jam these two different types of hydrogen together, and when they do that, they give off neutrons and energy. And that neutrons heat up the reactor, which heats up water, which drives a turbine. That's how you'll get your energy in the long run. And we talk about this a lot on this program. The world, of course, in the middle of an energy crisis. Is this part of the answer? It's a, it's a huge part of the answer, but I, I'm, a, I'm afraid I won't uh, see that answer come to fruition, I don't think, in my lifetime. It's something for the second half of the century, but not only in terms of clean energy. Um, you know, if we can crack this, you can imagine a world in the future, a post-scarcity world, if we can get this to an affordable and... Uh, and easily made technology. And if you really want to go far, um, you can imagine this is the power that could take us to the stars in the future. And this is obviously a truly international, collaborative, scientific endeavour. Yeah, the, the Joint European Taurus is, is, as I said, it's the proving ground for ITER, which is uh, International Thermonuclear Energy Reactor, which is now just uses ITER, the acronym, the way. It is the, um, a collaboration of 35 countries around the world, including China and Russia and many others, the US and most European countries, in order to try and crack this problem of how do you keep this reaction, how do you start this reaction and keep it going and make sure that it's giving out more energy than it takes to create it. 